Machicolation. 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 Hey Noble Ones, Metatron here. How's this word pronounced? What is the best way to pronounce it, taking into consideration the way it entered the medieval English vocabulary? As you know, I know a thing or two about languages, and besides, meticulations is not exactly a word that native speakers use on a daily basis, is it now? Meticulations! Plus I'm an immortal angel, so I heard the original plenty of times. Battle of Hastings. Good old times. In the first video, link in the description, Matt brings forth the alternative pronunciation machiculations as opposed to machiculation, basing the idea on the modern French tendency of pronouncing the diagraph ch as sh. And as the word has entered the British Isles through the medium of French, pronouncing it that way would be supposedly more faithful to the original. That was at least the basic logic behind the original thesis. Good one, Matt. Very interesting video, as always. In the follow-up video, he then proceeds to present period spelling evidence, which seems to suggest that machiculations with a ch was the way people pronounced it back then, with some of you in the comments pointing out that ch pronounced as sh was not a thing back in the medieval period in France. Yes, but incomplete. First, we need to acknowledge the fact that languages in their very nature are fluid and dynamic. Juxtaposing this fact into the spectrum of time, the changes that all languages have undertaken over centuries are mind-blowing, and I'll show you a few you're probably not aware of, both in English, French, Late Latin and Ancient Greek, with a little bonus in Italian to impress your friends because I love pasta. In light of this, using modern French as a point of reference, the fact that a modern Frenchman would say machiculi is interesting, but for the lack of a better word, irrelevant to our quest. There was already a huge difference between 12th century French, 14th century French regional variation. We'll talk about this. Modern French as a standardized official language is based on the Parisian pronunciation. The French that affected Old English instead was Old Norman. Both Parisian French and Old Norman are northern dialects. They belong to the subgroup called Languedoc, as opposed to the southern dialects called Languedoc. But that doesn't mean that they were identical. If anything, Old Norman had very characteristic distinct features when compared to how Parisian French is and was. The Normans favoured the W over Parisian G. This preference has left several traces in the English language, particularly in loanwords, borrowed from Norman French. See English war, which is related to Old Norman were, not modern French guerre, warrior, Old Norman werer, not modern French guerrier. And yes, I'm purposely trilling my R when pronouncing Old Norman. I'll get to why in a minute. Good spotting. English William from Old Norman William, rather than modern French Guillaume. That's why you say William the Conqueror. If it had been Parisian French, you probably would have ended up saying something in the lines of Gilliam. Wales with a W, whereas in French it's Pays de Galles with a G. And even in Italian we say Galles. This and other peculiar choices in Old Norman possibly had to do with ancient vestiges of Old Norse, also because we can only find them in the Norman variant of French. In a way, Old Norman was special. So what about CH? Well, Old Norman favoured the single C rather than the diagram CH. We see this in English words such as castle, which obviously comes from this Norman French word châtel, rather than modern French château. The Normans in fact pronounced the single C with a CH sound. They loved that sound. And we can see that both in words such as châtel, but also Charles. And you can appreciate how, as spelling evolved, the single C pronounced CH sometimes has evolved into a CH spelling in English. So why do I roll my R's when pronouncing Old Norman words? Well, that's because the French R R, technically the uvula trill, produced at the back of the vocal tract, usually with the uvula. Rodin, Raisin, Paris, Patrick, was historically pronounced as an alveolar trill. R, just like in Italian or Spanish, and it was only replaced completely by the end of the 18th century, possibly because of Burgundian aristocracy and their influence. Oh, and by the way, Matt, the pronunciation of sale in modern English, it's absolutely fine, but in French, well, in modern French now, it has become salade, but in general, the dropping of the finals is a middle French phenomenon, which started to occur between the 14th century and the 17th century. So possibly in the 15th century, French knights would have pronounced it salade. 
Okay, so so far the pronunciation matriculation seems to be the most probable, but I still have a lot of data or data for you. And what about Lloyd's matriculation? So bear with me, I'll get to that. So, so far we've understood the most likely matriculation is how they would have said it back in the day, they meaning the Normans, but how should we say it in English? At the end of the day we do know that English is a language that tends to modify quite a bit and quite a lot the words it receives. So, should we say matriculations? Should we say matriculations? Well, let's find out. We could say that modern English, with its colourful pronunciation and sometimes difficult spelling, is a byproduct of two major devastating events, these two great linguistic phenomena being the merging of Old Norse and Anglo-Saxon and GVS, Great Vowel Shift. The latter, GVS, being the reason why English spelling seems so incoherent and random sometimes. It's the reason why you say reason and not reason, like they did in Shakespearean time in the 16th century. I don't know why I love throwing books. It's the heft of knowledge. Let's have a look at Shakespeare's tombstone, the epitaph that he supposedly wrote himself. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to dig the dust enclosed here. That doesn't rhyme. What was it supposed to rhyme? Well, if you look at the next sentences. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. So it was either supposed to rhyme, or the guy was a schizophrenic. Let's try with 16th century pronunciation instead. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to dig the dust and close it here. Right, we got the rhyme, but we also got the perfect rhythm. It's now become eight syllables each. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear. Eight. To dig the dust and close it here. Eight. Okay, so this was just a very little example of GVS pronunciation changed over time, all the time. So it could have changed from the original ch that we have discovered in Old Norman. But what about the other thing I mentioned, the merging of Anglo-Saxon and Old Norman? Now, English is a beautiful language. It oftentimes allows you to choose between a Germanic rooted word, such as room and then romance rooted word such as chamber. Now they do mean the same thing but I think you and I can agree that the Norman French related ones tend to have to do with high functions of society. At the end of the day when you think of a chamber you think of a room in a castle. Another example is Norman French rooted fatigue as opposed to Germanic weariness. Norman French rooted diminish which is semantically almost identical to Germanic abate. And I shall resume my journey as my weariness abates. Modern English words for the common farm animals are all Germanic in origins. Cow, pig, chicken, calf and ram. Because it was the Anglo-Saxons, the population, that took care of the animals. So those are the words that stuck in time. But the relative words for their meat are Old Norman in origin. Beef, pork, poultry, veal and mutton. Most likely because it was the Normans in their fancy castles that could eat meat on a regular basis while the people worked the field. That's why even in modern English, if you say the sentence, I'm eating a pig, it makes you giggle. It's a fascinating mirror that acts as a time machine to medieval English society during the Norman conquest and, for those who know how to see, it's a treasure of information. But what this also tells us is that, at the beginning, the coexistence of Old Norse and Anglo-Saxon was a case of diglossia, a situation in which two languages are used under different conditions within a community, usually with distinct high and low variety. So what about machicolations? Should we take into consideration perhaps the Latin origin of the word, or perhaps the Arabic origin of the word, or Greek? In my opinion, no. Still, the video on Escalades by Lindebech was amazing, you should check it out. Latin did have the word, it was pronounced machicolamentum, and as an Italian, pronouncing CH as a K, it's actually very natural for me. The rule which comes from Latin still remains, and by the way, it's bruschetta, not bruschetta. Pistacchio, not pistachio. Eh, non mi fate arrabbiare, eh? Latin produced the CH to create a K sound because it was trying to transliterate ancient Greek. Now, in ancient Greek, the original sound was not actually a K. In fact, Latin CH is kind of a failure. Uh, originally, the Greeks pronounced it as a K, so K followed by an aspiration, which in modern Greek that changes into a pure aspiration and drops the K, but in Latin it changes into a K sound, which is generally speaking what happens in most languages when we say words such as architettura, archi architecture. But the reason why I don't think that matters is because English did not get that word, machiculations, through Latin. It got it through French, Norman French, and therefore through the filters of the pronunciation of French. 
Here, Lindy actually mentions a few words. It's kind of an interesting. I'd like to respond to that. With, with words derived from, from ancient sources, uh, CH is almost always K. Uh, if it's Greek, uh, CH comes out as K. So this, this monster, this, is, this isn't a chimera. This is a chimera. Um, and um, even when uh, a, a word goes into Latin, and we get it from the Latin, if it's a CH in Latin, it's almost always a word that's borrowed from the Greek anyway. So we study chemistry, not chemistry. And uh, on the 25th of, of, of December, we celebrate Christmas, not Tristmas. Um, so CH almost always goes to K. Sure, some Greek rooted words do maintain the K, but not as many as you probably think. See modern French archaeologie, cœur, chiographie, but chimie, chirurgie, chimère, anarchiste. Sometimes it does preserve the original K sound of Greek, and other times it doesn't. This, as linguists, forces us to look at each word case by case. All in all, it is my opinion that matriculation is in fact the best way to pronounce it, so I've got to give it to Shad in this case. And by the way, Shad, amazing channel as well. I love all of you guys and all of, the, of your works. And this is actually supported by these two sites. Check it out. As you can see here, the pronunciation is rendered through the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, and that's the symbol for CH. Tells us to pronounce it matriculation, and so does the Merian Webster. All right, noble ones, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, and if you are not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron and join the Highborn Army. Thank you so much to Shad, Lloyd, and Matt for all of their work and their interesting content. Goodbye.